This is exactly right. Begwin. And Begwine. <laughs> Welcome. This is my favorite murder. The mini sode. Where we are mini. <laughs> We're so tiny and, and teeny. Petite. We shrink down to and tell you stories. Yeah, real cute and tiny. And you send us your hometown murders, things that you found in your apartment, stuff your grandparents have done. <laughs> it could really be anything. We love stories. Uh, and that's what we're about to read you right now. Yeah. We're do you want me to go first? Th- should I go first? Oh, please do, because yeah. I did last time. Okay, I'll go first. Then, in that case, this is called Being Locked in a Car Trunk is Not as Much Fun as It Seems. Oh. Uh, it just starts. I grew up in the late 80s and early 90s with numerous siblings, so naturally my family drove a station wagon. Mm-hmm. It was a classic blue with wood paneling. No seatbelts, no car seats. We just roll around the back as my mom drove around clueless to how our death could be imminent with just the right accident. Yeah. Anyhow, the station wagon was the only car I was familiar with until my dad bought a second family car so he didn't have to ride his bike back and forth to work any longer. <laughs> he bought a bright red 1980 Mercury Cougar and immediately we were so impressed by the trunk because station wagons didn't have one. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we had never seen such a wondrous contraption. We were so curious what it was like to ride in the trunk that we began asking to ride in it everywhere we went. <laughs> <laughs> we were relentless. We wouldn't take no for an answer. We couldn't spend more than 10 minutes together without fighting, but somehow decided to be shoved, being shoved together in a pitch black trunk sounded like a great idea. <laughs> Dad said no, but nevertheless, we persisted. Sure. Finally, one day he agreed that Two of us could ride to Walmart in the trunk, while the other two could ride in the trunk on the way back home. Um, <laughs> da, 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 da. We get to Walmart, and I somehow managed to lose my family as they shopped and wandered around Walmart, lost alone for hours. At least that's how it felt to my five-year-old mind. Mm. I found them at last, and they were loading up the groceries in the parking lot. I love that <laughs> they just paid and fucking left. Yeah, they were the like, bye. He'll yeah. find us. She'll find us. I don't know. What. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, clearly they were less concerned about me being missing than I was because they went about their business but I was frantic I was crying so hard that my dad scooped me up hugged me tight and then gently placed me inside the trunk (laughs) cautioning me to watch your head (laughs) as he closed me and my sister inside the ride in the trunk was everything you could imagine it to be hot dark bumpy i remember my sister yelling at me to stop touching her as we flopped around back there <laughs> oh my god did did they have my older sister as their sister <laughs> i was grateful the trip was only 10 minutes long when we were let out of the trunk i remember thinking i'd never do that again <laughs> And went about my day playing until 30 minutes later when the police show up at our door to question us. Yes. Someone saw my dad place a crying child in the trunk of the car (laughs) and drive away. (laughs) After my dad convinced them we were all his children and he hadn't uh, snatched any of us, they spoke to each of us to make sure we weren't being abused. Oh, my God. I can remember them asking my three-year-old little brother if his daddy ever hurts him. And he responded, quote, only when I'm bad. (laughs) I was so, so terrified they were going to take us away and put us up for adoption. <laughs> My dad laughed hysterically through the whole thing because he couldn't believe how ridiculous it all was. The police must not have heard anything that worried them too much again because they left us with just a warning to never ride in the trunk again. Yeah. And we didn't. Stay sexy and don't ride in a trunk just because it looks fun. Leanne. Oh. <laughs> my god i love the idea though that the dad's like this is ridiculous it's like no 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 you picked up a crying child and put them into the trunk of the car truly could be arrested for child endangerment for this like bottom of the fucking basics nothing is explainable imagine these days that happening that guy would get arrested immediately yes oh my god but in the 80s and 90s it's like that's don't do that again please don't do that anymore because you really scared us. There's a woman who had a heart attack yeah. in that parking lot watching you <laughs> load a child. Oh, my oh, God. That so would be good. bone chilling. Okay. The subject line of this one is my summer haunted, uh, my super haunted summer camp. Okay. Um, oh, good. 
Because you were the um, last time you were saying you wanted a haunted one. That's right. Ghost stories, please. And this is left over from um, w- the Medford um, hometowns that okay. we asked for. Cool. Hi, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, Elvis, Mimi, Dottie, Frank, and George. Wow. First off, I love your podcast. Can't wait to see you in Medford in October. How was it? <laughs> My summer camp is a sleepaway camp in Western Massachusetts in the absolute middle of nowhere. Um, we're on a mountain in the woods with the nearest town having 140 people in it. Oh there is no cell service. And so it adds an extra creepy factor. When I listen to your podcast in the dark in the <gasps> woods, there are a bunch of ghosts on camp. Um, but usually they show up in the off season when the kids aren't on camp they keep saying hmm. on camp hmm. oh that's like when the people from the east coast say on get online yeah when they're saying get in line yeah that's right um dummies no what about the word at <laughs> okay there is the kitchen ghost in the director's house in the winter the people who have lived there going back 10 years have said opens the door walks in <gasps> and puts its groceries away at the same time every day but when you walk in there's no one there <gasps> there's also the ghost in the middle girls unit that shakes the bunk beds every few <gasps> years and will uh bang on the walls scaring the total shit out of the campers yeah um we also have um, the ghost called Horrible Hannah, and she burns down a building on camp every seven years. <gasps> what? Yeah. But the ghost that prompted me to write you was one from this summer. In the middle boys unit, in the middle of the night, when it was pouring, two counselors, Sam and Jack, f- fake names, um, were woken up by what they thought was one of their very homesick campers crying. They decided to let him cry it out a bit and see if he would fall back to sleep Mm -mm. until they heard him say, help, they locked me out and I can't get back in. (gasps) So obviously they both hopped out of bed and one of them went to open the door. Sam let him in and felt him brush by him and get into bed and both Jack and Sam heard him say thank you. Sam turned on the cabin light to help the camper get back into bed, and there was no camper there. No, 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 no. There were also no wet footsteps on the ground, despite the fact that it had been pouring for hours, and all the other campers, including the homesick camper, were fast asleep in their beds. Uh, Jack told everyone on camp the next day and totally said he wouldn't have believed it if it wasn't for him, and Sam both having experienced it. It didn't happen again, but everyone on camp can't stop talking about it thank you so much for reading this sorry it's so long and thank you so much for being so open about mental health i've been getting more open over the years about my mental health struggles but listening to you two talk about yours has helped me continue to talk about it and helps to end the stigma jillian in parentheses it's um just said like jillian but spelled with a g Uh, oh my god isn't that a good ghost story that's scary when children when it's ghost children who are crying oh yeah goodbye goodbye Ugh. what happened why is that energy trapped in that cabin oh why is it crying why is it crying and you just let it in yeah. now it's gonna stick with you forever that's right until you meet a priest <laughs> With America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. All you have to do is cook and enjoy. HelloFresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality. From step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinner rut and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 goodbye all right this is called Spooky Museum Artifact, and it is art called to action. To, if you work in a museum, send us, send us the weird shit that is in your museum. That's right. Here we go. We love it. Hello, spooky ladies and adorable animal companions. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I'm a curator at a small history museum in Central Florida. I recently listened to your mini episode where you asked for interesting museum artifacts, so I thought I'd share mine. My museum is dedicated to the history of the town of Lake Wales, which is your typical Florida small town based on citrus and cattle. Nice. Okay. And insanity? (laughs) Anywho, one of my favorite artifacts I found was in a half-collapsed derelict building. Think cobwebs, broken windows, plywood on doors, and graffiti on the walls. Cool. That the city owns and stores random stuff, some of which belongs to the museum. About four months ago, I was looking through with a volunteer and found a long wicker box, roughly three feet wide by six foot long. Uh Uh-oh. Six feet long. I couldn't figure out what it was, so we loaded up on a truck and brought it to the museum where I could clean it. Once I cleaned it, I found a small metal plaque that said it was made by a company called Frigid Fluid in Chicago. Mm-hmm. I looked them up and it turns out they're a funeral supply company. Okay. Frigid Fluid? Yeah. That's a creepy name. Yep, it turns out my giant wicker box is a, co- is a wicker coffin. Wicker? This one was likely produced from 1905 to 1925. They would be used by the police to pick up bodies at crime scene or death scene- scenes. Uh, crime or death, whatever, since they were lightweight. Mm. Also, since medical science at this time still had some trouble telling when someone was dead, you could store a body in it while you figure out if they're dead or not. Oh, no. The wicker allows air in for po- for the possible corpse to breathe, but still keeps out most insects or animals who might like to chew on a tasty corpse. Uh. Once at the funeral home, the body would be moved into a proper burial coffin. The local funeral home was cleaning out a closet about 30 years ago, found it, and thought the museum may like it. A big part of why I went to museum... Uh, Um, A big part of why I went to history and museums is that I love macabre history stories, so I was thrilled to find this. Unfortunately, my boss finds uh, it a bit unsettling, so now it's in storage till I can convince her to let me put it out on display. Thank you for reading my story, and remember, museums are full of neat, spooky artifacts. Sometimes we just have to keep them behind closed doors. Stay sexy and don't get murdered. Bartholomew. Wow. Yeah. Wicker coffin. Wicker coffin. Oh, there's a photo that Stephen is handing us. What? We'll put it up on the Instagram. Oh, no. It's so bad. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. It looks... It's really creepy. Oh, that's the creepy. It looks like what I would normally carry as a purse, but in a giant coffin size, like a vintage purse. You know what it reminds me of is we had this really old family photo album where it was like the black paper on the outside and all the pictures are black and white and small. Yeah, I have a bunch of those. And um, there in there, there was a picture Mm. of a baby that had died. No, you you were they one used, of those families? They, well, no, no, no. They all used to do that. Oh, and like okay. l- back then, 20s, Damn. 20s, 30s, they would, t- if a child died, they would take their picture. And th- I think that was in the background because the second I just, because uh, the wicker is black. It's not like. It looks like it was painted black. It's like kind of now grayish. We'll, yeah. We'll don't think, if you're thinking wicker coffin, it's not a picnic basket. <laughs> it is creepy, scary, uh-huh. summertime Dracula. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for this one? Sure. The subject line is my mom and two bank robberies. Cool. Hi, everyone. I want to preface this by saying that my mom is totally fine. <laughs> but this Great. definitely... This definitely everyone preface their, um, can everyone preface their yeah, letters? Of how everyone is. Yeah. Um, this definitely falls under the umbrella of creepy coincidence. This all happened within the last year. My mom used to work at a church rectory. There are two banks right around it, one on the same side of the street and one across. One day before work, my mom went into the bank across the street to do, you know, bank stuff. There was only one teller open and someone behind her in line. She did her banking and left for work. Did they say online or in line? They said in line. Thank God. (laughs) Norm is the norm is restored. About 15 minutes later, the rectory doorbell rang and it was a police officer asking Mm. her um, asking her if the church or rectory had any security cameras that they might show any of the sidewalk of the bank across the street because it was just robbed. What? She said no. But then asked, what do you mean it was just robbed? I was just in there. The officer showed her the bank security footage. You see my mom leave. <gasps> no. And then the man behind her approaches the teller and slips a, a teller the teller note saying that he's robbing the bank <gasps> and he has a gun. My mom was totally floored, but she wasn't really in the bank, so it's fine. Yeah. It was just a wow, what the fuck story to no, tell. No, that's so creepy. Fast forward a few months. My mom is in the other bank. No. Doing some um, banking for my grandmother. And she's at one teller filling out some forms when she notices that the guy who had been behind her in line, who had had gone to another teller and is leaving kind of quickly, but seems to be dropping money all over the floor. What? She's about to be like, hey, mister, you're dropping all of your money, but he's moving too fast and she's distracted by the slip 
um, she's filling out. So the guy power walks to the door, holds the door open for someone coming in, oh and God. then puts something in the handles so that they can't get <gasps> out and chase after them. Um, the teller the man had gone to looks up and says, we just got robbed. He slid. He had slid the teller a note saying that he had a gun and wanted money, but the teller had given, given him one of those fake hollow blocks that oh. are just supposed to look like money. There's a die pack concealed inside and only a couple of real $20 bills on the top of the blocks. Uh-uh. He must have noticed, which is why he threw it all down on the ground. When the police came and were questioning everyone in the bank, my mom told the detective taking her statement about the other bank Jesus. robbery she'd nearly been in, in in the middle of and the detective said i think you might want to try online banking oh <laughs> uh, uh, uh they don't they don't think it was the same guy but now my mom says that if someone gets in line behind her at the bank again she's going to turn around and take their picture <laughs> happy fall murderino stay sexy and maybe stick to online banking if you can best basha amazing that's so good what are the chances i mean so, to even be in one is like fucking one in a million. I know. You know? And I love that she just kind of isn't paying attention. Yeah. She's like, like excuse me, sir, you're dropping all this money. I've got other shit to deal with. Don't we all? Um, Karen, Georgia, Stephen, and lovely pets. I got my husband a 23 and me for Christmas because I was pregnant with our second child and want to see what uh, the European nationality was. He was always told he was French and, Scan- and Scandinavian. Fun gift. We moved after Christmas, blah, blah, blah. They lost it. Uh, then he found it again. Let's say. Okay, cut to. Uh, early May 2017, he told me he was fascinated to learn that he was mostly Irish. And he was so excited to see the results. I was sleep deprived, newborn, and went to bed. He woke me up around 10 uh, p.m. with a strange look on his face telling me that he has two half sisters. My initial thought was, did his dad cheat on his mom? Or did his holier than now Christian mom cheat on his dad? Ooh. He ended up exchanging phone numbers with one of his half sisters. And as we were talking about this, she called him. I told him to wake me up again when he knew uh, more. Around 1 a.m., he woke me up and told me that the man he knew as his dad was not his dad. Dad. Holy shit. Uh-huh. His half sister told him that he was conceived via sperm donor at a hospital in the early 80s and that he was one of at least nine half siblings that they knew of. What in the actual fuck? The next couple of days, he was wondering how he would broach the subject with his mom and dad. He finally just said that he had gotten his DNA test thing. His mom called a family meeting and admitted that his dad couldn't father kids. My husband has actually had a strained relationship with his family, especially his sister, actually half sister, different donor dads. Through this revelation, he found out that he went to college with his half sister. Good thing they never hooked up. And he found a half brother that he had absolute that he just absolutely adores. His half brother had lymphoma. And of all the donor siblings, my husband is the only perfect match for him if he should ever need a stem cell transplant. Wow. Once the brother uh, with cancer found out that my husband was a stem cell match, he and his wife decided to do IVF after after trying for 10 years to have a baby. They had their own baby girl in April 2018, and he is now in remission. <gasps> Me and my girls met their new aunt, uncle, and baby cousin, and I felt like I had known them for years and was told the feeling was mutual. These are my people. Uh, my husband's parents hate me for getting my husband this test and exposing their family secret, but that's their problem to deal with, not mine. <laughs> Stay sexy and don't re- regret buying a DNA test that exposes family secrets, thus making your in-laws hate you more than they already did. Anna. Whoa. Uh, a yeah. lot of, lot of issues in that family. Lots of issues. I mean, that's so intense. I think that's a thing that like, it, well, you know, it's funny is that that you've seen that Australian show sisters and we that's, talked about we it. Talked, I love that show. Everyone watch it. It's on Netflix. It's really good, but it's similar. Yeah. Someone finding out they have a bunch of brothers and sisters that they, they didn't know they and had. And then being like, Oh my God, thank God we didn't hook up. Oh, it's so crazy. Yeah. Watch the uh, Australian or is it? It's, yeah. it's Australian. Australian yeah. show Sisters on yeah. Netflix. It's fucking charming as shit. Oh, my God. It's That's so crazy. Send um, us your fucking stories. Everyone. My favorite murder at Gmail. Yeah. The f- the f- the dance floor is open. You yeah. can pretty much do what you want. Uh, thanks for sending everything in. We, we love getting these. This is like the best part of the week for us. Uh, and stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Elvis, you want a cookie? <laughs>